we're going to do some things here where uh, I have a list of questions that came from um, our technology committee, folks, this things that folks wanted to know. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about those things and then we'll leave some time at the back end if you guys have questions that, you know, uh, for your specific needs. So make sure you jot down some notes as we're going um, so that I save some time at the end, like 15 minutes or so. You guys can ask whatever questions you want. Let me introduce you guys to who is up here. First of all, Barry Cardin is with um, Mayor Electric. Barry, tell us something about yourself, please. Yeah, sure. I've been at Mayor for 29 years. Uh, I have uh, been in IT the entire time. I've actually led through um, uh, three ERP upgrades, uh, recently uh, our web commerce offering, and also we have a couple of mobile apps out there. So uh, I serve on the uh, Innovation Advisory Council for IDA. Hey, hey Mike. Hey, Good to see you walk in. <laughs> yes. And uh, of course, this panel here, and I think there's one other, and I forget the name of it. So. Mm -hmm. Great. And also, Matt Eberhardt is here with uh, the Hyde Company. Matt, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Matt Eberhardt. I work for the Hyde Company out of Pennsylvania. We have 22 locations. I've uh, been around for about 65 years. I've been with the company for three years. Uh, got me straight out of college. I'm actually in marketing. Uh, me and Barry were just talking about it. Uh, I'm also on the Strategic Technology Committee, hosted uh, and created by the NAAD. But I think I'm one of few people on that committee that's in marketing. Um, sometimes IT and marketing have uh, different viewpoints on things, but it's good to get both viewpoints. Yeah, we make fun of them sometimes. sometimes yeah. You know, I mean, what, what good are they? <laughs> <laughs> I get that a lot. Yeah. But um, it's good to get both viewpoints. Um, so as far as the Strategic Technology Committee goes, uh, I've been on the committee for about a year. Um, we usually have one face-to-face -face meeting every year where we get together in this kind of huge brainstorming session um, where we come up with topics that are the challenges that we're facing in the industry today as far as technology goes. Once we kind of pinpoint those, we come up with resources that uh, everybody in the industry will be able to use to help deal with those challenges. Uh, we've come out with maybe a dozen white papers over the past year um, focusing on different segments of the business, uh, different departments, different challenges, uh, and kind of giving you guidelines on how you can approach them. Different benchmarking tools, there's been a few videos out there from our committee, so uh, we're just trying to provide uh, insight and resources that you can use. And I think our next big project might be uh, an actual event around technology. Boot camp, I think is what yeah, we're calling it, boot technology camp. boot camp. Right. Um, so that's something we're going to be talking about in our next face-to-face -face meeting, I believe, uh, is actually doing a whole event just around those challenges that we face in the industry mm -hmm. as far as technology goes. Did I miss anything? No, I don't think so. It can be a geek meeting. You know, we all like to get together. It's the only time we can meet all day and talk about nothing but technology. It's so fun. Like, it's yeah, really it's fun. fun. A lot of fun for us. So. And the, uh, the other thing about in the NAD boot camp uh, for technology, they're trying to put together for this calendar year, just so you know. And the way I understand it, and they're still putting stuff together, so nobody panics or freaks out or is concerned. It goes from the beginning IT guy to the complete, right. you know, IT geek who certainly wants to, you know, pass along what the latest technologies are. So it spreads across a fairly wide swath of. Uh, of opportunities. Just because you don't have a, a huge IT staff doesn't mean you shouldn't think about sending somebody to our right. uh, technology boot camp because that person who's just getting started is certainly going to get a lot out of it. So keep your eyes open. Uh, keep your ears open for, for these guys. Certainly pay attention to the NAD website. I'm hoping that they'll be able to, I know they are too, hoping to announce a date on the technology boot camp sometime um, during this calendar year. So I think it's something that has some value to, uh, to a lot of folks. Quick show of hands because we want to know who we're talking to, by the way. Um, at your companies, who has a large, robust IT department, complete with a C-suite technology person? Okay. Oh, good. Good, man. Good. Who has kind of an IT guy who reports to other folks? Good. And who's just kind of has, we're doing the best we can with, good. So now we know some of the answers that we can, obviously that we can pose uh, toward the audience. So thanks for, for letting us know that. That's great. We're going to start with, one of the things that I want to start with is just kind of setting the table in terms of the importance of technology, the importance of advancement. And, and this sort of came as a, as a question that was posed to the, to NAD, it was, it was posed to the technology panel. It's simply this, if, if I do nothing to advance the technology of my company now, 
So finish this statement. If I do nothing to advance the technology of my company now, two years from now, what? Go ahead, Matt. Um, really, two thoughts come to mind. And the first, what you might not expect uh, from me, is you might be all right. If you have another key advantage, that, or a couple, you'd probably need a couple. If you don't want to focus on technology, you better be really good at everything else. You better have the best inside sales staff or the best project management. And in two years, you might still be growing, actually. Um, but you won't be reaching your full potential by any means. Technology is really the way of the future. Uh, it's the way everything's going, and eventually your customers are gonna want you to be involved in it. Um, so really, you might be okay in just two years, five years, maybe not, probably not. Um, but it, you won't be reaching your full potential. If you wanna be the best you can be, you need to be investing right now. My other thought was that it's an uphill battle with technology, as I'm sure we're all familiar. If you're not working on it constantly, it's gonna go ahead and change without you. So every single day that goes by, it gets harder uh, if you wanna start investing. So it's better to start early, keep yourself in the game, keep yourself aware of what's going on, um, because really in two years, uh, it's really gonna benefit you with gaining and keeping younger employees, with keeping the younger customers that you're gonna be dealing with, uh, meeting new challenges that might not exist today, so. Barry? Yeah. I believe that in two years that you'll you'll have a competitive disadvantage. I think that you really, I think you probably could already have that today. I know that we are, are starting to see that. I got specific examples of customers where we cannot even participate uh, in in the bidding process unless we have a fully integrated electronic solution. So you know, starting to see some of that today already. Um, I think another key piece of this that you may not think about uh, as you look to grow your companies into the future is about the, the type of associate that you're trying to recruit into your organization. So if you're trying to, to go get that uh, young person out of college and, and they come in and they may actually interview you and see from a technology standpoint that you don't have some initiatives at least going they may not select you because they want to transact business in a different way. And I think it could certainly put you at a disadvantage uh, in recruiting uh, new talent in. And, and I would say also today, you think about technology, I got a question for you. How many, how many of you in the room came in here this morning and tried to connect on the Wi-Fi to do, check your email? Yeah, so we got, I see with four hands, five, six counting me, and we can't, right? I mean, it's not possible in here, and it's like, you know, okay, we're having a, this is not a gripe, but this is, it's the fact. I mean, you got half the room that we came in, and sure, we're gonna do email, but think about your customer. Think about, put your, your place, yourself in the place of the customer. He comes in to your website, or to looking for a website, but he comes to, to do whatever the task may be, and all of a sudden he can't do it. So what did I do? I got here early, I couldn't connect. I took off back to the room, which is three miles away, I think. And uh, I went back to the room and got my hotspot and brought it back and set it up. I found an alternative route to do what I needed to do. Well, what could happen is our customers could find an alternative route to do business with us. And that's kind of the worst case scenario. So let me follow up on that. I mean, where do you, where's your custom, where do you expect your customers to be in terms of technology two years from now? You know, I'm already starting to see the shift. Um, so, so far this year, I've made probably close to 10 customer visits. And of those 10, I would say that probably seven of those 10 have already started to make a shift to require more technology requirements out of us, everything from, you know, they want to, you know, can you send me my invoices, which is fairly simple, can I get my pricing, then yes, we can all do that through net price or trade service exchange. But now it's, uh, it's other things, can, you know, can we do vendor managed inventory? Can, can I go to the website? Can I do all my ordering online? Can I, uh, can I do the whole quoting process online? Uh, so, you know, we're starting to see more and more customers who want to integrate with us. And they're now, a, a lot of customers have purchased iPads and they've got iPads out in the field. At the end of the day, sometimes all that they're using those things for is to check email and to type something out and send into the, to the office 
and it gets processed, but they want to they want to automate all of that. So how do we do that? And those are the kind of things that we as distributors have to, have to figure out. And so, you know, I'm starting and 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 in the case of this year alone, what I am starting to see is the people that I'm talking to. If I go back three years ago. And I don't mean this to sound wrong, but three years ago, I was talking to people that were my age and, and 60, 70. Today, I'm talking to 20 and 30 year olds who's maybe uh, taking over the business from their parents or they are either been uh, brought in as that new talent and they're trying to change the way they do business. And um, you, you kind of brought it up, so I'm gonna kind of stretch it. That's what people are doing today. It, it has to be difficult to take today's technology and projected two years from now? Because things could be radically different. I mean, who knows what's gonna come out in the next 700 days that's gonna actually change the technology. But if you're not in the game today, you certainly can't get there two years from now. Right. So you're seeing already kind of some small things. You know, guys have iPads, it's not exactly what I would call earth shattering. Right. Um, but certainly there's the opportunity. So what are you seeing about today's technology, people who aren't embracing that, and what happens in 2017? Well, I think in 2017, you know, we, we, we think about uh, the mobile society a little bit, and I really believe that in 2017, <clears throat> you know, we've kind of gone into a full mobile society. I believe that a lot of that transactional work is gonna take place on devices wherever people may be. And, you know, whether it's a tablet or whether it's, you know, even, a, you know, this is a surface, which is, you know, basically a computer, but more like a tablet. But I do see that in, in, in the next few years, you know, today, you know, we see a lot of uh, customers wanting, you know, especially on the industrial side, and you get into wanting to do CXML, POs and invoices and these kind of things, and those things have been around for a while. However, you know, a lot of that, uh, these open system integrations are gonna allow us to more, uh, to interact more uh, easily with our customers. And some of the systems that they're now starting to, to upgrade to is allowing that, that ease of use, so the ease of integration into our systems a lot easier also. So I certainly see that in the next two years, the, the demands for, to, to be able to really go through the whole buying process without a whole lot of human intervention mm -hmm. being the norm, not the exception. Today it's kind of the exception, but I do believe it will be the norm in two years. Mm -hmm. Matt, um, you guys were talking a little bit about uh, recruitment and retention and technology and what mm -hmm. it takes. And sort of on the subject, but off the subject, I'm a big believer that Amazon and, and drones isn't a real thing that they want to do. I mean, right. I just think that it, all they really want to do is show off that we're a cool company and come work for us. Because sure. we do innovative things and we don't really want to fly drones. We just want everybody to know that we're cool. Right. What what real life things are you running into as you try and fill positions at the height company, where you can't fill them because these kids are so technology advanced or or so concerned about moving into the future with technology? Right. I mean, on the most basic level, they won't find you if you're not online and have a have a presence. Uh, if, you, if you don't so, show up in search or you're not on social media, they just won't even know you exist, period. Um, especially our industry, a lot of people don't realize it exists. We're kind of in the shadows uh, doing important things. Um, so one, they won't be able to find you unless they run into you at a trade show. And two, after they run into you at a trade show, the first place they go to research you is online. So Barry's right. At this point, they're kind of interviewing you back as much as you're interviewing them. They want to see that you're a fun company to work with, an innovative company, um, that you're, you have a young audience, and that you will give them the responsibility they want uh, in the workforce. So there, social media is probably one of the biggest technologies as far as recruitment goes. Uh, if you have a presence on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, um, then you have a lot better chance of getting them engaged in the beginning. Um, but then once you, once you get them engaged, you have to have the technology actually in the workforce too. They want to be working with the most up-to-date thing. Um, so your ERP better be pretty easy to use. You, you shouldn't really be on a green screen. They don't want to deal with Oregon Trail uh, like they used to. <laughs> but um, that, so it means a lot to them. So it should mean a lot to us as far as recruitment. Uh, back to the customer perspective though, uh, mm -hmm. to kind of piggyback off of what Barry was saying. 
those customers that want to integrate with you on a very in-depth way, uh, from your technology to their technology, constant communication, those are the ones you really want to be with. Those are the ones you should be focusing on. They're the ones that are growing the biggest right now because they're focusing on technology themselves. Uh, they're lowering their expenses and making themselves more efficient through the use of technology. And they want you to be a partner with them in that. And really having a customer that's a partner and not just a customer is the best thing you could ask for. Uh, and those are the customers really that we've been focusing right. on. Exactly. That have worked the best for us in the past five years.